Super Saturday, 34-4. The uh, Wires continued the woes of the Rabbitohs. Try saying that <laughs> ten times quick. Uh, yeah, stats, Barn. Uh, yeah, we had one try for South, six for the Warriors. Missed conversion from South Sydney, five out of six for the Warriors. 18-4 uh, at half time, 60% completion for Souths, 84% for the Warriors, 343 plus running metres for the Warriors. Three line breaks to six, 25 tackle busts to 30, 10 offloads to five, 359 tackles made by Souths, 306 by the Warriors, 16 errors to eight, six penalties conceded to four, three ruck infringements against the Warriors, one inside the 10 against both teams. Sean Johnson with 112 supercoach points. To Marie Martin with... 98 and Egan with 88. Then you had another two Warriors players before you got to Latrell Mitchell on 73, and fuck knows how he got 73 super coach points. He's, in, anyway. the cleary, <coughs> he's in the cleary realm of unicorn <laughs> points. He does bump off a lot, so I he does. Give him that. Yes, but, yeah. he did have a couple of nice runs, but um, yeah. yeah. Well, my inebriation from the uh, Dragons Newcastle game led into this. Continued. I'm pretty sure I was <laughs> napping while this game was on. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so, there are a lot of South fans by the end of it, but uh, and I yelled out and about as well, but managed to see most of it over my shoulder, which wasn't much to offer from South. So, the minute. <laughs> they looked good for about six minutes. Yeah. And then they realised <laughs> they had no forward pack and game. their backs weren't much better, and they watched for the rest of the game. And, yeah, that was about the end of it. And that was about six minutes of back and forth, and then they just fell apart, fell fucking apart. Um, <clears throat> nice little spread to the left for the, um, the bloke on Boo Thompson, I think it was, mm -hmm. um, to score that first try. No, he's, uh, he's played before. He's played lots of games. Okay. Well, um, it was a different Thompson, I'm pretty sure. But anyway... Um, AJ's yeah, replacement would have, been, would have been AJ's try, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> he yeah. wasn't there this week. Um they just, like, they made a mistake straight off the kickoff when after scoring a try, and that was the end of their night. Like, they <laughs> just got steamrolled for the rest of it. Um, yeah, you know, they got into an arm wrestle for a little bit of the game, but <clears throat> their, their ruck defence was atrocious at times, and Egan was absolutely having a field day, picking them apart, running the ball, sending massive forwards into gaps and just destroying that ruck defence at different times. Um <clears throat> they they got the ball out wide a little bit as well, but um, this game probably hit a dull spot for 20 minutes or so there after that first try. And you know, once the Warriors started to get up and going, they just um, their attack was so slick at different times. With um, to Marie Martin actually looked really good coming back. Uh, some really nice short passing and short kicking on the left hand side. Sean Johnson just uh, sending back rowers <laughs> at halves that weren't interested in, in making tackles on their own line. Um, they just they, they seemed to panic, the Rabbits, and they didn't seem to have any other option apart from throw the ball to Keon and hope Keon Kulamatungi does something because <laughs> other than that, their attack was pitiful. Like They did not look like breaking the line for the majority of this game. They Oh, and Charns did not. Miss a beat, came back and was fantastic. Has twenty nine runs or some fucking something stupid. Went looking like for that. work. He, his support plays much more direct than RTS. He doesn't. Yes, RTS is. sweeps out, whereas he'll. Well, you know, and obviously he's been there for a bit. He's, he's a few years together, Egan, but he follows following Egan the and forwards. Johnson. Yeah. And that that was just a magnificent sleight of hand that just the to put Johnson in where Egan just um, waited all the time in the world, but went to go wide, popped back in, and it, that was. Um, it was all over. It was yeah. all over. Beats was the markers, draws the A defender, sends him back through where the markers are meant to be. Yeah. <laughs> and then Johnson looms up in, in the middle of it all. And, yeah, it's, uh, the way the South's defence got pulled apart, it was um, dramatic. Like, it was just blokes running in the wrong direction at times. Yeah. <laughs> it was blokes just arm grabbing or just standing there watching, other, watching the opposition just run straight past them. It, which it, it, it's been coming to this though. Yeah. It, it has been coming. This it's been it's been this bad for. But it's 20 generally rounds. not the middle. No, not so much the middle as it was in this one. But um, you have to give it to the Warriors. They really do know how to pull a defence apart at the moment with um, their nine nine seven and one being able to. And in fairness, it's the first positions. time they've had all three uh, on the field this mm -hmm. year. Yeah, hundred percent. So, 
and, and, and I've been waiting for them just to put up a score. They, they were doing it last year, and now they're starting to say, I think they're going to springboard off this. I think mm. they wouldn't want to play them well, really for the rest of the year, but <laughs> next few weeks, because uh, everyone looked good. But their halves play more direct than most in the comp as well. So they get off mm. that, that roll from the, the forwards going through mm. the middle, and then Egan, if it's not Egan popping his head up, it's a it's a nice sort of cut out ball to one of the halves, and then they've got direct runners on the outside, which whether it be a centre or an out, an outside back, or and then you got Charns popping up back through the middle, and it just provides so many options for their playmakers. Uh, I think it might have been Cooper Cronk who talked about uh, ball players are only good as a support pl- as mm-hmm. the players are looking for work, and it's no coincidence that. If, if Wade Egan's not the best crash play hooker in the game at the moment, he's in the conversation. And if he's not, well, Sean Johnson's the equivalent at halfback. Uh, mm. and, and that's got to reflect back on the fact that Barnett, Fenua Blake, Ford. Jackson Ford. Uh, yeah. Tohu, not so much. Um, but they're the big three, and they always hit such great lines. Um, and they're always there. They're always just in the right spot. And I think that um, is kudos to them, but obviously also very well coached. But... I think that's a noticeable thing, and, it, and it's a good point because lots of halves can get in the right position mm. and not have support players around them. Yeah, well, you, you see, it, you see it so often <clears throat> with either Johnson or Martin or Metcalf now. And they angle out and they aim at the half and try to draw the the half in the centre. Mm. Then you've got a back rower and a centre running the the flat line on the outside. Yeah. Someone jagging back through the middle, and no, good luck defending that kind yeah. of. That kind of shape when, when it's presented at you. And, so. then, and, then, if, if and they, then the end result is usually someone goes over untouched. Yeah, or it's a little grubber in behind and someone yeah. dives on that or the, it's a cutout to the winger who's standing out there on his own because everyone's jammed in and it just, just causes chaos. Yeah. They're just... Um, what can, I'd like, without dragging this conversation out, what else can we say? Like They're just a very, very well-coached team. They're all there for each other and they're just kicking on from what they've done last year. And a big part of it's the, their forwards are so good through the middle of the field. It just draws the defence in. They have to compress in the middle because they're getting bumped off. You know, it's taken two and three blokes to put down those big guys in the middle of the field. Yeah. So then you've got blokes left laying around in the ruck or you've got lazy marker defenders and then yeah, yeah. everyone has to come in and take another position inside where they should be. And, and it starts again exactly what we just spaces, spoke about. Space is provided yeah. everywhere. So moving forward, that's going to predict the top four right there, doesn't it? You've got you got your Storm. I would suggest it. Yeah. Storm. I would be flabbergasted. Your Broncos, your Penrith, and up the wires. At the, I'm, I'm getting to the stage where I'd be flabbergasted if it wasn't that. Unless something goes wrong during the season, God forbid. But yeah, there's you know, always a, a late run. I'm waiting for a Cowboys slump. I think it's mm-hmm. coming. Yeah, it's coming. That's coming. I, I believe that is coming. And then we'll see. And, and same as Dolphins. Like oh, dolphin, Dolphins are on I don't want to say they're on top of the ladder. I can't say that they're under sufferance, but... No, they're not, but it's whether they can uh, yeah, whether like they, they can complete or um, hmm. convert. Whether they can yeah. convert well, at the end of the season. They've just been pulling teams apart with pace at the moment, the Dolphins, and hmm. it's gonna, some of these better defensive teams will be able to shut some of that stuff down. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> you've still got the Sharks at the moment in the top four, but... Obviously, they're missing the whole forward pack at the moment, and we'd like to see them at the end of the set day. the world on fire either they in also attack. Don't, so. um, their attacks their attack is so much different. The Sharks to last it's year, been but, that's a, this year. but that doesn't about. mean it's going to stay. No, that it doesn't way mean either, it's bad. So. But at the end of the um, day, they, they win. We also ships. know the Warriors won't drop the ball sixteen times, whereas right now we don't have evidence the Sharks <laughs> won't. So, but you don't win Correct. premierships in March or April. So. Of course, one hundred percent. Yeah, alarming for South fans, the way that just, the defence got pulled apart. And we spent, and we spent you know, 10 minutes on the start. Injury suspensions. I, I, yeah, we've, we've I, already I, talked there's about There's a rumour, I, and I, there's a rumour the coach has gone tonight, but I haven't seen it confirmed. Well, I heard earlier today that he had a this week. weekend. Yeah, but so, well, yeah. also moving forward, does that mean that your team, Adrian, moves out of wooden spoon position? Yes. If, if we, I would be severely disappointed if the Tigers run last in this competition, given... Um, the effort and application they've shown so far. Mm-hmm. But there's plenty of time to fall off a cliff, and they have before. Yeah, there was about um, three... I think some are already at the bottom of the cliff that's probably a change. <laughs> uh, Tane Milne actually did a lot of work for the Rabbits, getting mm. out of their own end, uh, heaps of running metres and, 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 the, and all the tough stuff that nobody else really seemed to want to do in this game. 
Um, Tatal or Keon were their, probably their better attacking options at different times, but that led to very little. And Murray and Cook just worked their ass out as they do in the middle of the field, but the the rest of the blokes around them. <laughs> That's were right. You can put all the work in, in you want, and yeah, if you've got no supporter in you, well, where are you going to go? Yeah. Um, Torhu again did, did plenty of work. RTS and Barry looked good on the edges, um, causing problems out at the centres. You mentioned Fanua Blake and Barnett. They've been probably two of the better props in the comp to start the year. Um, Ford was great running those lines on that left edge again. Uh, Chans, Tamari, Martin we mentioned as well. But um, it was Egan and Sean Johnson that ran the show in this game. Yep. I. We always say Wade Egan. Well, I think Wade Egan's finally getting his flowers this year. It seems to be the, the push. For, I mean, he's only just come back from another injury. There's been a bit of, bit of talk but about it. But there's now yeah. the origin chat. Starting, uh, I have no issue with it. I would have him on at 14 if mm-hmm. they're going to play two hookers. I, I, and that's saying Appy's nine. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think I think the days of Damien Cook being there are over. Uh, thoughts on that? No, that seems yeah. fair to me. Yeah, no. I, I, yeah, Damien Cook, he's... I don't know, as we were saying before, if he gets that voice, if he was given that voice a bit more, maybe he could continue on as past prevailed, but at the moment, no. it's not... And unfortunately, I don't think you can... On form, you can't pick him for origin, at no. least. Robson's putting his hand up, too, as well. He's playing pretty well. Playing pretty well. So. But speaking of origin, just, I know it's a little while off, but please pick on form. <laughs> they, I think Madge will. And I'd suggest Egan will be in and about, unless they look at, like, a McGuinness or something as a 14. I could see the only... Very, it can be an interesting origin team. In fact, I'd be disappointed if they don't... Um, if they do roll out the same people and I'll just get your mic up a touch there. So Egan um, or Johnson for three? I'll okay, get Egan three. I think just give him three. Johnson, Johnson two, two and Charns then has then to one. Charns one. Surely. Yeah, yeah. It, it, we are still the other thing with it and it does get said a lot is that eighty four run meters from Latrell <laughs> and I would suggest sixty of them would have been in attack. Um when you mentioned I just thought of it because you mentioned Milne earlier. And you look at a losing effort for Penrith and Dylan Edwards still rolled out three hundred it's like Chalk, it's just chalk and cheese. Could you pick? Do you think Latrell should be picked for Oregon? And you got to say, um, a lot of those would be on kick returns where you're getting ten free meters as well. Mm. That's right. Before Straight you're even the hitting the, the lines. So, yeah. um, exactly. no, I can't. Couldn't. Couldn't, couldn't even possibly think of him at the moment. No. But it wouldn't surprise me if he ends up in the centres. And it wouldn't. And would get there and tip him out of the match. You know, like quite possibly because. But when he's though, good, man, he's fucking he's a, fantastic. He's unbelievable, and he's ahead of the game. He, he reads the game of footy really well. And yeah, but consistency's got to come the key. Like absolutely. Yeah, no, no. I and if that's what Matt just said, wouldn't surprise me. Doing. So I, is, I reckon they pick him. But, but is Teddy one hundred percent out of rep? Is this? Is no, this I think Teddy's been no. the informed. He's been very fullback. Good. No, mm. yeah, but like. You know, there's been talks around that he's going to give up rep this year, but it hasn't. No, no, he's, I think he's put his hand up. He still wants to yeah. do it. I would still pick him, but I can understand the case for Dylan Edwards. Yeah. Well, it's I wouldn't about be time surprised he if he was still concussed in 11 days, to be honest. Mate, that, yeah, that, that is, is, <laughs> that, oh that is the other horrendous. issue. God. That is the other issue. There are, and he's getting towards – he's starting to get to the territory of mm. another one this year. And yeah, all well, of a sudden, do they go? You know what? Have the re- you know they've done it with Kiri, where but we're two saying really is, bad ones, and they just say you just got to have six weeks off. You got to go and sit out. Is that that territory of the HIAs or the territory of the age? But well, both. Because when you look at the he started the, the he next started game, we're about to talk about. It has for twelve months. Yeah. You look at the next game we're about to talk about. Daly Cherry Evans, thirty-five. Yeah, he was on fire. Yes. So you know, it's is it the age? Is it the it's it's a tough. Yeah, but Tough Teddy can't play in a dinner suit. That's <laughs> no, right. he can. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it does. Sure. And has time to do up his tie along the way at times. <laughs> uh, all right, let's Buffy get to shoes. it. Uh, yeah. The uh, and sorry, we'll bar all talk of Latrell now mm-hmm. for the rest of the show. Yep. Until we see him we, again. Uh, until we need him for those end of show awards, if we oh, need yes. him one of that. <laughs> one of that. <laughs> all right, Manly, three hundred and ten games DCE, and this was one of his. One of his good ones, thirty-two sixteen over Penrith. This is why Brent's here because he's all fired up. One of his good ones about it. <laughs> uh, but what did <laughs> what did uh, the stats say first? Five tries to three, hundred percent conversion rate. Five out of five, three out of three. One out of one penalty attempt for Manly. A missed two point field goal attempt 
14, 6 at half time, 80% completion played 73%. Eight line breaks for Manly, three for Penrith. 32 tackle busts played 41. 11 offloads to 10. Three force dropouts to two. 291 tackles played 305. 12 errors to 13. Three penalties conceded by Manly. 11 conceded by Penrith. Four ruck infringements to three. DCE with 128 supercoach points. Edwards with 119. And Tom Trebojevic with 111. Let's start with the good. It was the DCE show. Uh, he was absolutely <laughs> was fantastic. The DCE show. Had the it didn't matter shoot. where it was. He was there. He, yeah. Wherever that football was, he was there. I'm going to put it down to probably one of his, one of his better games ever. He it, was it, just he'd probably there. say that. And he's had the. We talked about it on the preview show. He's had a little bit of the game plan against Penrith. I don't think it necessarily needed to play out this way because Penrith weren't great. No. Um, we weren't at their best, I'll say. But Manly were good. Manly were good, and they play as you said. They play early shift. They play up tempo footy. And just bought they out energy Penrith, which isn't an easy thing to do. I thought, mm. Brian, what do you think? Not, you know exactly. Um, the both teams were quite physical early um, in this one. Edwards was spectacular. Let's not deny him yes. his flowers either. He was brilliant in this game, and he was a big part of the say, reason. He, that was this is nearly his best. For, I know he's had a did he win a Clive Churchill and things like that. Mm. This would be in his top five games. I think he was great. In a losing game. He, he was definitely the epitome Penrith of the might team. have got beaten to nil if he wasn't on the yeah, field, 100%. to be honest. I've, like, yeah. he was – every time there was an attacking raid going on that was um, any – of any consequence, it was involving Dylan Edwards, whether it was him coming out of dummy half, putting over um, young Schneider for the first try or just or constantly the, be on that sweet play or, or backing up through the middle of the field. Try. 88 <laughs> metre try. That was Jeez. a fucking horrible grubber, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll still take it, mate. I'll still Kick it straight it. to him and stand there and watch him. <laughs> yeah, that bloke had a shit game. <laughs> he was fucking, he was trying some things, DCE, in this game. Man, oh. he was trying some <laughs> trying some different things. This was the DCE that got the 10-year signing. Mm. Mm. Where has he been for the last eight and a half years? In a shit tank. <laughs> no, he, he's, he has been good. He was, I thought it was he great. Had, like, he's been very good. He has been very consistent. But, but um, he, he has consistently. He gives you seven, he, seven good games out of ten. He, yeah. as much so. as anyone, I think, probably realises, to beat Penrith, you've got to fucking You've, throw the shit yeah. out the window. and 100%. You, put need, it on to, them. you need to put yourself and, to the next and level. And it's nearly worked last year and it's worked this year. You've got to try different things. The yeah, Penrith are just it. too good at... Wrapping up that sweet play, wrapping up that inside ball. They, they've it. seen it a million times. They've defended it a million times. The defensive structure's set for that kind of shit. And, and you and need to be doing the chips over the tops, the grubbers in behind, the yeah. early kicks, all that kind of exactly. shit, early shifts of the ball. Because if, if you let Penrith get uh, that slight chance at it, they're an 80-minute team. Oh, you don't want to get in an yeah. arm wrestle with Penrith. No, that's no. right. They're, they're an 80-minute team. They're the fittest team in the comp. And if you... Don't give yourself every opportunity to try and throw them off. You've got no chance against them. Yeah. And if you yeah, want to just battle it out, you're going to lose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Penrith started well, got the first try, as I mentioned, with um, Edwards out of dummy half. And there was a good 20 minutes of back and forth. But this was probably one of the better manly performances in the forwards. Not mm -hmm. so much of busting through the line and carrying players with them, but hitting the defence, hitting the ground and getting up real quick. Like there was some real fast play the ball speed at different times from the manly forwards. And that really got them on the on the front foot with DCE. Then either real early shifts and long balls to get it out to the outside backs, to um, to really stretch the defence for Penrith or another forward back through the middle and again up tempo, quick play the balls in the middle of the field, which seemed to disrupt uh, Penrith a little bit. They they weren't at their best in the middle of the field in their defence, which is generally they're completely rock solid there they they weren't bad by any means but they they did seem to get a little bit disrupted by mainly being able to hit their front a lot and getting up and playing uh quick quick it, play the balls it also didn't help with that uh 14th player on the field <laughs> <laughs> aka the bunker there was a couple of um home home calls there for Go the manly side have you say oh, <laughs> come on not that, uh, look anyone who watched the game that is, n that is a knock-on every single day of the week. Every week, week in, week out, that same stuff happens and it's a knock-on. It's called straight off the bat. The whole – both teams stopped with that intercept knock-on. Except for Cora. Except, Except for Cora. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, full, you, see, you see fullbacks jump for balls, 
hits him on the shoulder, lands directly behind him, yep. and gets called for a knockoff. Exactly. Yep. All, you know all, what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, I love the Annesley read on it, right? You come out and said, by the letter of the law, the ball ended up behind where it touched his hands. Yeah. And Fine. I think they played if you rule it they that played way the, every fucking and, uh, week. They, exactly. If you're going to be consistent beautiful. with yeah, the yeah. calls, I'd love we to would be happy. Because there'd be a lot more unstructured football with balls hitting the ground and yeah. defences being disrupted. That's and you're going to see if a lot more If that had to happen, as you said, if that shit. had happened a kick and they'd gone to bunker on a captain's decision, they would have said insufficient evidence to overturn... <laughs> 100%. The knock-on. 100%. If, the, if knock-on. the ref had thrown yeah, up the no-try, uh, that wouldn't have been... And right. I'd love but to I think, that, I think they played the audio, and I think basically the bunker said... The um, ref called they, play on. The ref called play on. There's no evidence to the say... The balls it, it ended up behind forward. where it hit yeah, his hands. So. Exactly. Um, and I'm all for it. If they're going to call that every week, I think you're gonna, you'll see some spectacular tries off the back of it. But this is the same thing I've but, been calling for for the last eight to ten years. Consistency in the refs. Yeah, I, like, I think it should be at the stage where... Where we're at, we may they should just say to Ashley Klein, please retire, and you bunker <laughs> no, and you bunker all Every eight game. games. At least yeah. then we all know what the fuck's going on. That's it. And if he bunkers all games, yeah, he's I'll across. Fucking do he's it. across the rules. Yeah, like, but yeah, I don't know. At it's least just, it's the same. My point is, at least it's the same interpretation. Exactly, and that way it's the same interpretation. We get games every where the interpretation is different need, in, from half to half. But he doesn't from need to be to at yeah. sometimes. He doesn't need to be at every yeah. game. He can no, sit no, in the he bunker. He literally sits at his computer yeah. at home and he can do it. It needs to be it needs to be so way more unbiased. It's it's extremely biased at the moment in the fact of interpretation of the rules. I will go as far to say as there were some other calls um, that didn't go Penrith's way that I didn't agree with as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. Perhaps very much so. But yes. um I know it's been a rough four years for you, so no, I can't extremely say rough. I but like, well, but at the end of the day, say, like, I think I'd, I'd rough. rather I'd rather put my <laughs> position on the one that is easy for the standard uh, standard viewer. It's to it's understand. ABC that yes, if that happened, um, if that had happened first, first play off a scrum and thrown to the uh, halfback thrown to the five eight and he drops it in that fashion, <laughs> play it, they stop the game. Pack that another scrum. would have happened three or four times in this game. Yeah, I know. I know. And every other game this weekend, yeah. and it was called a knock-on. But, yeah. But, um, yes, there were some other calls that I was very interested in as well. But Come on, let's get into them. Home Why ground not? refereeing decisions. Because I put them out of my mind. Is it DCE's 310? Yeah, it was, it was, it was a little bit of that. It was always yeah. set up that way. It, it, you get it every week. There's always at least one or two decisions that go to the home ground team. Yeah. Unless, oh. unless they're getting absolutely it's just, stomped over the top It's just very hard for Penner fans to cop because usually... Yeah, yeah, I know. I think... <laughs> oh, come on. We've, we've copped a lot of shit. What is it? Round five, years. and I'm pretty sure I've heard the Pen ref call about 34 times this season, so... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, anyway. we, see everyone. <laughs> see these other fans forget all the times oh, yes, the <laughs> used to cop Us plebs at the oh, bottom yeah. of the mountain. It's every all the time times I sat there in the pissing down rain when we were coming last. Yeah, and that's it. fair. There was 200 Absolutely. people at Penrith Stadium. That's yeah. it. I was yeah. there. It was so myself. easy to get a beer. It was awesome. It's funny how cold Penrith Stadium is when it's empty compared to when it's full in winter. Oh, so yeah. that, that's, that's different. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, we mentioned the, the horrible call there. Five minutes into the second half, um, DCE's tried something different and then sort of stood there and watched Dylan Edwards as he runs the length <laughs> of the field and scores down the other end. Um both teams kept playing attacking football. That was one thing that I did enjoy this weekend. A lot of teams were didn't yeah, matter yeah. that it was slick and that it was wet and, I said and that, whatever. I, I noticed. I said that last week. I've noticed it's been a particular change that every team's happy to move shift the ball yep. earlier. Looking to There's, score they're, points. They're moving away from block plays, away from. I think maybe because they just realised they just can't out wrestle Penrith, so they got to. <laughs> uh, finally, so just for the record, eleven three penalty count. Yeah. At home, as you mentioned yeah. earlier, yeah. Yeah, see that, see that in itself, like, that's rough. Mm. That's rough. So that, yeah, anyway. I'd the big part of this game was the about five minutes Leave your after. comments, uh, leave your thoughts in the comments below if you think Penrith has been hard done by over the years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can't, careful, we don't have enough room for all those comments. <laughs> about five minutes after um, the Edwards runaway try, there was 15 minutes of really disjointed um, attack from Penrith and frantic footy. Whereas um, generally they're making those one-on-one tackles. There was blokes sliding off tackles and uh, cover tackles having to be made uh, sort of all over the place. And it, it really left um, Penrith exposed there for about 15 minutes. And um, 
Tommy decided to get in the back and ha- have a couple of real strong, hard runs and <laughs> he scored he some points. He actually a couple of um, the runs Luke Brooks has been taking. He's yeah. sort of like, nah, come on, get Brooks. Get out of the way, yeah, I'm doing it. My yeah. turn now. <laughs> but, that al- <laughs> but that also goes to show that Penrith can be dishevelled. Hmm. Of course, yeah. yeah we, and, and, we've, but, and it doesn't happen often. We've seen it. No, that's right. But at, at the end of the day, if they're also you play the let, right let's way not, against them. But let's not pretend... Um, they were missing both the halves they for were. most of the game. Joe was off the field for a bit. And Yo had Which a, a yeah, slender rest. And then he, his first touch back on the field, he was he freaking steps amazing. He goes through the, yeah. <laughs> through the line. And, yeah. But uh, let's, right. let's not pretend there's, yes, there's a production line, but it's not. No, a, it's, every it's not foolproof. Oh, right. Dane Laurie. Dane Laurie. Did what Dane Laurie did. Like, oh, yeah, he was there. Oh, look, I, I, think, I think I understand where they're going with Dane Laurie. I understand what the play is with Lua leaving and all that. I have no fucking but, idea. But I, no, I, I, it's a very simple plan. It's a fact he was happy to come back to Penrith on a hundred grand, and he's a bloke that's happy to play reserve grade for the rest of his life and play three and games of first. Exactly, Nine and he's, play al- he's also yeah. someone who's happy to step into that five eighth role. Yeah, but but gosh darn, he's, he's even he's like he. But then he was trying to support play and, and running into yeah. people and doing and stuff then like running independently was, and not, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, like that's not was that's not the Penrith's game plan. He was out pot planted by a few, but I thought but about yeah, it, it was a, it's the game plan to upset Penrith mm. early shifts of the ball, uh, different different shapes in attack and um, early kicking and uh, and different types of kicks. You know, not just the kick to the corner and. The, the, the grubber in behind the line, there was, a, you know, some chips and different different types of grubbers at different parts of the field, which Penrith weren't used to looking at. So, But back um, on the Dane Laurie thing for just a second, the, the people I was watching the game with were going, oh, who's this new bloke, Dane Laurie? <laughs> like, that's, <laughs> that's how, sorry to say it, but that's how shit he is, that he's already played for Penrith <laughs> years ago and now he's come back and he's, no. Nah. I'm sorry. It's yeah. That's that's not the move forward for the five eighth position. And I doubt it will be. As I said, I don't. There'll be someone else. Snyder will go there. Otherwise, well, they'll, they'll bring, yeah, they'll bring a kid up that, from somewhere else. I'd appreciate that. And they'll I'll, have someone else. A friend else. of mine's son is. Uh, he'll, he'll be right in the age bracket come next year. Yeah, but right. at the same time, you know, there's a hundred other kids out there. Yeah. So Old, you so don't know. Old, um, you know, Pat. Yeah, he's very tired. He watches everything every week at yeah. Reggie's level. He's already said there's there's six better blokes you've never even heard of. No, hundred percent. That will be there before before you know it. That's so. it. Well, my mate, son, he's played schoolboys. He's played city country. He's played Origin, all in under under grades and whatnot. He's signed for Penrith till twenty twenty six, but that doesn't mean he's ever going to see the field. Mm. Mm. But he, watching him play up against watching Dane Laurie play, I'd rather be watching him play. Yeah. But it, they're very good penners that not exposing anyone to the have to as well. They just, you know, it's just a game against Manly. But anyone listening, and it was never the plan. End of the day, Laurie's only there on the sitting on the bench. Hundred percent. But, but any, anyone listening out there, that's uh, into the Penrith Juniors. That's Jackson Edgar. Hopefully he goes well. Okay. Yeah. He's a he's a good young player. As I said, signed with twenty six already. So really? only seventeen Top at the 30. moment. Oh. So, Seventeen at the moment. Yeah, so he's only yeah. seven. Mats. Yeah, he's only. Okay, yeah, Mats, yeah, he's yeah. only your Mats. So, cool, but yeah. Yeah. yeah, good luck to him. Yeah. Hopefully, he hits here one day. Yeah. Mitch Kenny and Lindsay Smith were, were oh. okay. They're Lindsay. pretty good games. Um, Lindsay Smith, mate, he's going to go far. Mm. Yeah, uh, Luke Garner had a good game. Uh, yeah, so did Schneider. I thought they they were um, some of the better players for the Penrith team, and um, it was Joe and Edwards again that were brilliant. They were the, the, the big part of what Penrith did when they did good stuff. LEA and um, Nathan Brown had small minutes, but I thought they had a pretty good impact. Mm. Uh, as I said, hitting the, the front, standing strong ovation, runs, hitting, hitting standing the ground ovation for Nathan Brown. Yeah, right. He was on the field for about three minutes, <laughs> and wow. when he went off, the whole crowd <laughs> stood up. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, this bloke's been through what six clubs? Yeah, <laughs> and Manly have embraced him. He has been him. good for Manly. He yes, has they been have embraced the ball him very hard. Speaking of um, blokes being good for Manly, Corey Waddell. Mm. <laughs> as an E turned up. <laughs> turned a corner, absolutely. Mm. Uh, Toff Sipley and Paseca were very good, as was um, Ola Kawatu, who's probably been their best player for a big part of the year this yeah. year again. Um, Cooler had a very good game as well, uh, but it was Tom and DCE that were the ones that put the, the rubber stamp on this game. We, we, we tend to, for some reason, this is the thing I finish on now. Um, top eight, Manly. They... That's about it. They'll be surprised if they don't make the eight. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't th- I think there's no doubt. To be they'll honest, be, they'll be bottom, like seventh or eighth. Yeah, yeah, like not suggesting otherwise. But, 
six, seven, eight, and depend just how fit, how Tommy and DCE get through Origin. I would suggest you. Yeah, what's well, that, that's decide. another big call as well. And you mentioned, I mean, you've mentioned, we've mentioned Edwards, you've mentioned Teddy, but I guess if he's fit and firing, Turbo's Tommy, gonna yeah. be. Turbo's got to be a discussion for one, but they'll probably happy to play him in centres. Given there's not a, they'd rather him play in the centres than bringing, somewhere else. Centres coming out their ass, aren't they? Him and him and Crichton in the centres, I'd imagine. But yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, no, that's um, <laughs> but yeah, and obviously no panic stations for Penrith. It's just a nah, game. Absolutely right. not. That'd be sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, three points DCE. Yep, hundred percent. That's two points happen. Edwards and yep. one yep. to Tommy. Correct. Yep. Yep. I'll pay all for all of those. That's beauty. All right, main event Saturday, 26-16, Dolphins over the Tigers in a, a game. Is this Stats? top uh, main event because it's uh, top of the ladder and yes. should be top, bottom top of the ladder? Clash. <laughs> top eight clash. Four tries to three. He's three out of four conversions, played two out of three. <laughs> two out of two penalty attempts for the Dolphins. 14-0 at half time. 89% completion played 80%. 142 plus post-contact metres for the Tigers. Most of those were Stefano's, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Five line breaks to three. 26 tackle busts played 27. Nine offloads to 11. One force dropout to two. Two 40-20s from the Tigers. 333 tackles played 326. Five errors from the Dolphins. 11 from the Tigers. Six penalties conceded from both teams. Two ruck infringements to one. Two inside the 10 against the Dolphins. Stefano with 84 supercoach points. Jeremy Marshall King with 70. Caesar with 69. Just on those uh, 40 20s, I'm pretty sure one of them was a 40 10. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty close. That was, it was very good. You, <laughs> that was good. Usually I'm quite critical of halfbacks that don't produce heaps of points, but I thought Seas was great in this game. Um, unfortunately, without producing heaps of points. Isn't got them around the field. We but, um, got them exactly where they needed to be, yeah. Uh, Dolphin started off, which has been the traditional weakness of the Tigers, um, just off- early offloads and getting the line early and just creating enough space for their quick outside backs, and they were much quicker than our outside backs. was <laughs> <It's> a <laughs> problem they? to start with. <laughs> um, how do you see the start of this one? Yeah, well, it was um, pretty a lot, of be- a lot of effort from both teams. Both teams put in plenty of um, effort, especially early in the match, but the big takeaway for mine was the Tigers' first half. Like, yeah. It wasn't even the first half. I think it was the, well, eight errors in the first half. Throw in three or four penalties on the back of it, and you're just not anywhere near a game. And fourteen nil at half time probably should have been twenty four nil at half time yeah. realistically because you're doing everything you could to put yourself in a bad position, and then um, having to try and scramble when the ball got wide. And um, yeah, some of those guys just got absolutely burned on the outside edges of the defence, um, likes a Bostock and. <clears throat> the Sarko just running a muck down down a couple of edges there, but um, yeah, never really put themselves in a in a position in the first half. Um, you gave them, they like they go and kick a forty twenty. They had three cracks at it, I think, in the first fifteen minutes, and then they kick one, and then within thirty seconds they drop the ball. Yeah, like so, <laughs> you, you go down the other end, set yourself up. It wasn't thirty seconds. It was, it was first like, play. It's first play. <laughs> it yeah, was exactly. first play. <laughs> Or first, second play. The first or second play <laughs> after a kick in a forty twenty and you yep. drop it. And it wasn't a, a wasn't a um a pressured drop either. It was just a ugly yeah, looking just <laughs> drop of the ball. Yeah. Um Jeremy Marshall King really pulled the ruck apart at different times as well. Um lazy uh, lazy market defence. There was a couple of times like Papa Lee had a pretty good game, but there was two or three times where he was just less grasping thin air as Jeremy Marshall King ran past him. And he's just sticking an arm out, hoping to grab a jersey and getting nowhere near it. But, um, yeah, the, the Dolphins really c- cut you open to begin the game. And the first two tries for the Tigers were, I thought, pretty much defensive, poor defensive efforts from the Dolphins as well, which <laughs> sort of I let thought, the Tigers back in. Mm, I, I thought probably from about the 25, yeah, 25 half hour mark on, I thought the Tigers were pretty much in control for the next half hour of the game but without being I think well, basically they stopped dropping the ball and then mm-hmm. once it was, it was back on an even keel it was almost check on each other like there's yeah, no you, you were winning the forward and battle and then uh, yeah. a few people down at the pub asked well were you you know how, how are they beating the outside backs or, and I said 
just sort of beating us by existing better than, <laughs> <laughs> better than we exist, really. And here we all were <laughs> hoping for three in a row for the first time in so how many was, years? I know I was, but um, the I fight back was 2018? Um, 19. 2019 no, uh, was, the last was the last one. 18? Yeah, if you yeah. need to know. Yeah, yeah last um, time they won three in a row. Was happy for Fatapi. He's been pretty good this year, and I was happy for him to get on the board mm-hmm. um, with a couple of tries. And I'd go as far to say when that – Appy made that break through the middle, and it was was it it was off. The both markers were offside, and then it was raked. We didn't have a captain's challenge, and they gave the ball back to Dolphins. I think that was it. I think that was the end of the section. If if it goes the other way, and we scored next, I think if Tigers had scored next at that stage, they go close to winning the game. Look, I um, think Appy had a pretty good game. He did. He's had well, a fantastic he, season. Think, yeah, I think yeah, and that's not a knock on Appy. It's a, no, it's, no, 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 you know, not at all. Uh, I'm not saying that. You know, the reason you didn't get that penalty was because Alex Twal was standing in front of the ruck and walked straight between those two markers where Appy ran <laughs> straight between those two markers. Well, I didn't say that with my one eye, man. <laughs> 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 Alex Twal just like walking back and then just cut straight between the two markers and then Appy's jagged out and gone straight through the hole. And the ref said as much. He goes... Alex Twal was in the fuck yeah. away. Like, why couldn't you? Yeah, uh, <laughs> everybody's going to cut the challenge. But there, um, mate. you weren't going to. Far about, we don't want to you know, do usual crap in about Tigers. But <laughs> I was actually quite proud of the defensive efforts because they were on a five-day backup. They lost mm-hmm. Bateman, yeah, they yeah. lost Fainu, uh, and they lost the other Fainu as well to a Hammy. Yeah, and and, um, um, and to hold to hold go as deep this game as they did yeah. um, in a physical game, I thought it was kudos to them. So that's all. That's all I say about the Tigers. Really, apart from saying that. Jaden Sullivan is not the answer to anyone's first grade five. No, hundred um, percent. There was probably a, one or twice. Once or twice, um, Buller got caught out of position as well with some mm-hmm. short kicks in behind the line, and yeah. one of those led directly to a try from Nick Arima. Um, the I said the the Dolphins scored two tries of bad efforts of, in defence from yeah. the Tigers. It wasn't the other way around. Sorry, um, the Tigers. I thought were up for the fight for a big part of the game, but. Um, yeah, Buller got caught a couple of times, as I said, in defensive positions. Safarth had his cranky pants on for the last 15 minutes. Mm. He wanted to punch someone in there. Yeah. He, he was getting real fired up, and the ref had to check him a couple <laughs> of times. <laughs> Basically said, you say one more word, you fucking going off the field. But then he scored that crash over try, which got you close at the back end of the game. But um, Stefano was amazing in this game. I, messaged, I think I messaged you or the chat, one mm. of them, and said that he's a – at his best, he's the best prop the West Tigers have had since a young Aaron Woods, mm-hmm. uh, and he has been fantastic. He's, he was phenomenal in this game, yeah. bumping blokes off. He, he, that was he was couple in, in Tino class what he break, was doing, uh, quick, and fast, strong, quick, and just absolutely outstanding. Like our best player by a long way. So that was, was back when uh, it was uh, Aaron Woods, not Sharon. Yeah, Woods. But that was before yeah, Sharon yeah, Eric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, which people forget how good he was, but that's he was, he was he was. The big made, difference was you don't make Origin how yeah, many he, years in a yeah. row without being good back in the day. Yeah. But yeah, Aaron turned into Sharon. The big difference for mine was probably just a little bit. Um, there was a fraction more attacking class in the likes of Katoa, Jeremy yeah. Marshall King, in the middle of the field, and that's a couple of really good games in a row for Katoa. And really starting to show um, his wares well, as a, well, as a part of those, but I think it's very apparent in this game. How important Lockie Galvin is to this team, mm-hmm. because already only mm-hmm. three games in, but Absolutely. Caesar's playing his game plan to what he would play for Galvin, mm-hmm. and unfortunately Bud Sullivan's not not Lockie Galvin. Uh, you know, a bit of luck maybe something comes off, but he, he didn't look likely at all. Fainu had Latu, a run Fainu, or two that was okay. I think his hammy went five minutes in, but looked like he was going to try a little bit harder. Or mm-hmm. I didn't say harder, shouldn't they try harder? But be more involved with the running game. It um, it's not happening. I would look. Wherever they're heading, uh, and obviously Luai's coming back, uh, coming and but Duai's looming as well in eight weeks or so. I, I don't know where the future even lies for Sullivan beyond things nah. like big money. I suggest he might be in England or somewhere else soon. Yeah, it might be an op- it might be an option. Have you already been there? But um, uh, yeah, Tigers yeah. probably didn't didn't provide their their um, well Caesar mainly enough attacking options. Like there wasn't the mm. guys flooding through in different uh, like. Running lines that to my point he, about he the probably Warriors needed. Earlier, yeah. Um, uh, Katoa, yeah, was quite good. And Fainu's been kicking. that guy, which mm-hmm. we lost as well. Yeah, got yeah. a HIA and was out of yeah. the game, which didn't help. Um, but yeah, uh, Katoa's kicking game was fantastic Absolutely for was, mine. He's yeah. really come into his own in the last couple of weeks. 
and um, he's got a really good short passing game as well, which um, which helped. But them we get talked in the about round. the, the Roosters the halves earlier, um, whereas these two halves complement each other. I think at times Cattell is happy to play, just play the the control kicker, yeah, and he's much better pass. than we ever thought he would be. Mm-hmm. And then you got Nicarima, who's the running heart, the the running five eight is going to try and duck duck his arms and head through the line, and then see and he's with him. And cause quite a few problems yeah. doing that as well. Yeah. Um, and and the nice cutout early to get the the play underway. So, um, but Jeremy Marshall King was probably the most instrumental uh, for for the Dolphins in setting up uh, the forward role and and a couple of tries at the back end of this game. So, but I gave Stefano the three points. Well, I okay. thought he was the well, best player yeah. on the field. Um, well, I him too, just meters. because um, they didn't win. But I agree, he was phenomenal in this game. Yeah, just bashing down that front door but just quick continually. Speed. But he was on his own for a big part of this game, which <laughs> it just doesn't help. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy Marshall King with the two, and then Katoa with the one. Uh, yeah, I'm okay with that. Could yeah. Um, what they do have now, the Dolphins, and so a few teams don't, and, and, and it, we're now looking at haves and haves nots. We see a little bit of Canberra when we get to them. Mm-hmm. You need pace. You need if you're going to make half a break or a break, you need to have a bloke that's going to run and score. And if you don't have it, you yep. you don't win first grade games. So are we talking about the Hammer here? Or? All of them. Hammer. Yeah. Um, Bostock. Bostock. Avarillo is quicker got some than you good think. Pace. Yeah. Nick Arima is quick. He'd be Jeremy Arima. Marshall King, Marshall if he King gets in quick. behind the line. Yeah. Um, Zarko. Yeah, is, yeah is Zarko. But um, you had a question just before. No, I was just going to say moving forward, like, you know, you're a one-eyed Tigers fan. How does Luai fit? Long-term, obviously, Caesar shuffles out. Uh, and he is 35, and it was a one-year mutual option. I th- I'd say he probably stays at the club and hangs around and plays 14 next year. I think Sullivan's the other one. I think he's on. M- they signed him before Richardson came in and before they had Caesar. And I think he's on more money than people realise. I don't think. I just don't think he does. But at the end of the day, and is, I, is do the his, way... do his contracts up so he probably goes unless they can convince him otherwise because he's a bit is more Is he going to be your saving grace though? Is the is the big question? Is anyone our saving grace? Well, it is the Tigers we're talking about here. Exactly. I, I, anyway, Lewis how good's Brooksy to... going? And now he's moved on. <laughs> oh, he's right. he's, he's just, you, know, you know what he's doing? He's just being Luke Brooks in a better team. Luai's going to have to change his game a little bit because they're going to be playing him at seven with Galvin at six by the looks oh, so, of it going So he forward. can't do the step-step yeah. run? No, yeah, right. he, will, he will be. He will do that. He will do he'll that. Do that. But, um, but he's probably happy to do that, and that's fine. But he's left to... He's 50% of the time, he's going to have to be first receiver and he's going to have to make that decision whether he does the step step or gets the ball to someone else I yeah, honestly in a better think, position. So. I honestly think that if he's put in that position where he has to make that call being first receiver, he will step up to the mark. Yeah. But I just... For your sake, I hope it's Everyone wants to tell you that enough. he's a he's a good resource receiver that doesn't have to be a first receiver. We saw it a bit... Last week, when Cleary, uh, two weeks ago, when Cleary went off the field and he was good. Um, yeah. as I, said, I'm I think av- Galvin avid, might even step into that first receiver. Place. As I said, I'm but an avid Penrith fan. The other thing is, we're, we're probably going to head toward at some point, Gavin, Gavin being a bloke who's happy to make 35 tackles, hmm. playing 13. He likes to play direct. He's yeah, play 13. You've got Fain, and you've got Fainu there, who but. was the is the other half in the under-19s. I think they'll switch between the – for the first 12 months, it'll be switch between something. Galvin and uh, Luai. The, the, rap, the raps on Fainu are as big – he's been injured, right. but yeah, as big as on Galvin. So anyway, we'll let's see. worry about that That's in 12 about months 12 away, months and people time. are tired yeah. of me talking 12. about Tigers. So that's fine. <laughs> Come on. Come Talk on. about the Dolphins. Um, yeah, so three to Stefano. What do we say? Three Stefano, two – Jeremy Master King, one Gatoa. Uh, yeah, if you're a Dolphins fan, cool. They're going to keep winning for a bit. I just don't know how full that gas tank – yeah, it depends we'll how they, they go up against a real strong team. Forward packs and defensive strong forward, sides. Yes, I, I hate to say it because it's a cop out to say, and I'm about to say it about the Cowboys. They haven't played anyone yet. That they haven't. And they haven't. And like you can't ride on the top of the table in March, April. You look at South. That's uh, where they were at this exactly, time last year. Exactly. So, you know, once you go up against a proper defensive and a, and yeah, well, a proper defensive team, really, at the end of the day, that's when they're going to realise what they're actually up against. Exactly. 
Talking of proper defensive teams, I'm not sure either of these are one of them, nope. but uh, Cowboys 35, <laughs> Titans 22. <laughs> and uh, again, defence was not an issue in this game. Mate, I'm still spewing they kicked that bloody field goal. Yeah, I had me multi freaking gun. 1 to 12, I know. I know. <laughs> Nothing beats self interest, but what does stats say? <laughs> six tries to four, five out of six conversions played, three out of four. Uh, one converted field goal for the Cowboys, 16 nil at half time, 70% completion for the Cowboys, 83% for the Titans. That surprises me. 458 running metres and 135 plus post contact metres for the Cowboys. 10 line breaks to 7. 3, 35 tackle bus played 28. 12 offloads to 7. 1 force dropout to 0. 291 tackles played 333. 15 errors from the Cowboys. 6 from the Titans. 5 penalties conceded from both sides. 1 ruck infringement and 1 inside the 10 against both teams. And a sin bin for the Cowboys. Drinkwater with 144 super coach points. Robson with 117. Holmes with 93 and Brian Kelly with 83. See, listening to those errors, I, I can't believe that the Cowboys had 15 errors in that game. Like, it was theirs. And yep. they let the Titans back in. And, well, I suppose the errors proved a, a that the that's errors how were, the Titans got yeah, back well, in. A lot of them were attacking errors. Pushing uh, passes. Pushing yeah. pass. Val dropped about four balls when he was half in space. Yes, well, this is to, true, yeah. Um, I, well, Val yeah, didn't have his best game. But, but anyway, the Titans were dog shit for 50 minutes as well. They were, the they moral were. story is the Titans are <laughs> dog shit. Now. Yeah, look, end of the day, we haven't seen Drinkwater get heaps of space in time all year, and he got heaps of space in time in this game, and he fucking tore him apart. <laughs> he just had the ball on the string for the first but 45 minutes. You look at this game and you go, how is Cowboys in second place on the ladder? They won't be soon. Because they've got no, points 100% they won't be soon. They can they've score points. But like points this game in. proves that they, they're not going to stay. They've got, no, that's yeah, they've got right. points in them and no team's really put the blowtorch to them yet, apart from the Dragons who beat them <laughs> 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 was it last week yeah. or the week before. And they really got in, roughed them up and beat them through the middle of the field. And that's how I think they're going to get beaten a lot of times during the year as well. But um, Once they come up against some real opposition, that's that's where they're going to lose. They've so. got some... Yeah, they've, they've just got points in them. Like, you can score more than 20 a year in most of your games. You know what I mean? So... You get you can, you can yeah you can score twenty to twenty six points you you good chance of winning yeah, yeah. you put them up More against a good defensive team so. they're not going to score that twenty twenty six points no exactly points, well, no. the dragons pulled them apart a couple yeah. of weeks ago so um, yeah it felt like it was all the cowboys for the first half um, they held the middle didn't really dominate the middle but they were they were pretty pretty well in control. Uh, but they just spent most of the time swinging the ball from one side of the field to the other. <laughs> like it was just, we'll try the right side, we'll go back to the left side, we'll come back again to the yeah. other side. That was pretty much the whole game, wasn't <laughs> it? Yeah. And, and we'll find one of those centres having a snooze at some point and absolutely. we'll walk straight past them. And we'll just crack them. And <laughs> yeah. if it wasn't drink water stepping and going for himself, it was him throwing a cutout for somebody else or you know, an outside inside ball and then someone would stroll over and it, it just looked like it was going to be an absolute blowout <laughs> by half time. Um, the Titans didn't look like threatening the de- attacking line, at, a defensive line at all, apart from Preston Campbell, who... I th- uh, Preston. Jaden. Jaden <laughs> Campbell. Yeah. I was going to say, come out of retirement. was actually quite a... lively, you know, coming back. A bit, you know, a bit of rust still on him, but he was, um, he was really... You know, with a bit of pace and footwork was causing problems, but at different times. AJ chimed in and did a little bit of decent stuff there too, but um, they really didn't threaten the Cowboys' line until they switched off. It, like they, they were done. They were, they, yeah, 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 game's they, in the bag. This was the definition of switching off, off this game. Yeah. And uh, and they probably got their asses hand to them by Todd today for it. I would say so. <laughs> uh, let's, quick, oh, let's get the Titans out of the way. It's They're a, at a stage now the defensive that line's no, the defense fucked. is awful. It, it is, well, it obviously is the worst in the comp. It's, it hasn't gotten better. It's actually looked worse. Yep. In the last few weeks, well, so I think Sammy's they, been out, hasn't he, for the last couple of yeah. weeks? Who's been probably their best defensive outside back, which you wouldn't say is possible uh, given <laughs> previous like, years. I think they're at the stage where they have to bite the bullet and go, well, if our best attacking hopes are Campbell and Brimson, they just need to be. One and six, or six and one, or however it's going to be, and go for it. Whether four and play seven, whether mm-hmm. whatever, because C- they're the only points of attack. There's not another point of attack around them. And oh, Fafita had a couple of goes, but he, yeah. he, he he ended up being an old Dave that ends up on the wing a few times as well in this game. But <laughs> um, 
And for, yeah, for most got a nice try and, and has worked very hard. He's getting back, good to see him back and all that sort of thing stuff. But yeah. that's the team. That's it. And the rest offer little or nothing. Well, Brian Kelly's been trying pretty hard this year. He's actually had one of the better seasons. Mm. But ball in hand anyway. Like yeah, he, ball in hand. Running yeah, hard. He, and yeah, yeah. Yeah, Spoilers on who's come up as pot plant. We'll get to that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but in attack, he always has. But there's mm. issues with... They, they brought in two new wingers, which can't help. And it didn't. So, no, no, it's not. Um, well, I don't know. What, have you got a thought on what you even do at the Titans? Or you just well, back to the point that we've sort of been making this whole time. Like, where do you put them? Is it is it sixteen versus seventeen Titans and Rabbitohs? Well, it looks like Forens now is probably going to be out this week by the looks of things. So yeah, he's out for scans. I, I actually haven't seen the team for the Titans. Tanner Boyd so. probably is their best kicking option, so you probably do leave him at seven, but. All he's got is his kicking game, which yeah. hasn't been great this year to begin with. Um, Brimson then has to go into six by default, and then Campbell at fullback. Um, I'd almost flip it, you know. Yeah. Like I know, you know. I've said it, it for but two just play, years. Just play but Campbell and play Campbell second receiver and play Brimson at one, at one. Yeah, no, that but makes sense. It doesn't matter when you shit. I've um, said it for a few years, but their forwards are getting chewed up and spat out. They don't have any. Well. No. Moe's the lone hand, and he's getting owned he's, a bit. Yeah, he's not um, not really with us at this no. year. But, I don't, but he's just got no allies. It's hard, at least when you've got one or two you can look to. No, and Fafi just came back. Sorry, I'm just checking. In. Yeah, Foran, well, Foran's named, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, he was having scans. Maybe he's all right. Yeah, no, he's named. Didn't so. look good. No. But, um, yeah, but, yeah, Cowboys, they're all nice plays. All their points come off nice plays. Drinkwater will... By nice, Drinkwater just waltzed over a couple of times, but yeah. so good, good movement to Labor, good movement to Tulangi. A couple of nice Standard. times where they put Val away and he yeah. managed to drop, drop the, ball the ball again. There's <laughs> a game where another day Val scores four and he just yeah. dropped it all through in a touch three so times. So where do we put the Cowboys? What, 13th? No, nah, no. Nah, 10th, maybe. 10th, maybe. I wouldn't even go that far. I think I'd want to see because their gas tank ran out super quick a couple of years ago and I don't know. I feel like we're back to a couple of years ago when the back end's going to be tough for them. Yeah. Once they really start grinding. Yeah. Once so that's when they start, start to drop to the yeah. bottom yeah. of the bottom eight. I think I think them and them and the um, well, the Titans are probably the biggest hope. The Dolphins are both spoon at the moment. Yeah. I think they're almost going morals. off consistency. <laughs> yeah. Almost morals unless South completely capitulate. Well, but then again, South, 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 South have done this before, and yeah, they've been at the bottom. South, and they can go away. Yeah, yeah. No, no. You've been the throw. You didn't bounce South. All right. Come on. So, um, South might get a new coach and win six straight. Yeah, well, this know. is true, like, and that's what I mean. Like, they've done this before. They've been on the bottom of the ladder near halfway in the season, and they've ended up in the top eight. So yeah, another team that know. just completely gave up on their line speed in defence with the Cowboys. 30 minutes to go, 28-4 or whatever it is, and they just started walking in defence and got found out. <laughs> there was, the Titans went on and put – what. Put another eighteen points on or something in the space of fifteen minutes. Well, and that's what well, me and Adrian actually sat here and watched the game, and that's what surprised me the most. Like they were written off, mm. and then they just came back into it, and we're like, "What's going on here?" Like, yeah, and then came. my one to twelve thing almost come to fruition yeah. until the freaking field try. goal. Yes, that's right. Actually, yeah. <laughs> it came off Campbell yeah. and um, Furmore was doing some good stuff on that right edge, but. Um, yeah, it, it was realistically the Cowboys just walking in defense in the defensive line, and <laughs> they just got found out by blokes who were running at them. Yeah, funnily enough. Mm, beautiful. Uh, <laughs> to anyone listening who didn't notice that, I noticed that. It was that was Barney telling me to shut the fuck up. <laughs> we're going back to the uh, <laughs> we're going back to what we were talking about. I, th- I, th- I thought the cold shoulder was just from the weather, but that's fine. <laughs> And then, yeah, felt intercept was probably saved them realistically because the Titans were coming to get them oh, at the back they, end of the they, game. They, oh, I thought they were actually going to win it for a second then. It, it felt did just it had, it up they did particularly have the sails up until then. Yeah, that definitely took the wind out. Um, yeah, Fermo and Jolla for good. I thought Hass had another really good game. Cleese Hass has actually been quite good for him this year. Um, Feeder did some good stuff. And as I mentioned, Campbell was their biggest threat. Um, Tuolangi from the Cowboys was was decent. Chad and uh, Felt had de- had pretty good games as well. But it was uh, Cotter had a, a good game in the middle. Yeah. Um, Holmes made too many mistakes as we mentioned, but it was pretty decent. It was um, Drinkwater and Robson that were the best two players for the Cowboys. They really um, provided all the 
impetus through the middle of the field and um, yeah, involved in all the points. I think it was either Cotter or uh, it was either Robson or Drinkwater that was supplying the points for the Cowboys. Yeah, three points, drink water, t- two points. Robson will give one to Cotter, I reckon, working away mm-hmm. there and move on um, and wrap it up with the Raiders hosting what's left of Parramatta. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what is what 41 is eight. Uh, You talk about bottom four as well. Yeah. This was a bottom four performance. It uh, was a bottom four it performance. It was probably, I don't know, it took a while, but 35 minutes in this game, I just um, turned around and might have messaged you blokes and just said, no, para are just shit. Was a wood well, they, we, we, just went, we went over at half time. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, were they were they were they were awful. Para, uh, no interest in being down there in the in the winter chill and getting bashed <laughs> by those blokes. <laughs> and the times they tried to, um, they were just outrun. They were out. Oh, the Raiders were us. aggressive. But you ask any fast. para fan out there, this year, next year's our year. No. Yeah, no. Once Brett <laughs> Arthur goes, it's all going to be solved. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, that's, that's yeah, what that's, they keep he's telling the problem. Us, yeah. Anyway, Barn stats: seven tries to two, <laughs> four out of seven conversions for the Raiders. Uh, both conversions missed for the Eels. Two out of two penalty goals for the Raiders and a and a field goal. Thirteen nil at half time. Seventy eight percent completion played. Seventy seven percent. Six hundred and fifty nine plus running meters for the Raiders over Parramatta side. Nine line breaks to three. Thirty eight tackle busts played. Twenty. Nine offloads to seven. Four force dropouts from the Raiders' side. 269 tackles played, 376. 11 errors to 10. A ruck infringement against the Raiders. Four inside the 10 against one. RCG ended up with two <laughs> two on reports for trying to take people's heads off with his shoulder. Uh, Supercoach points. Tomoko with 124. Schiller with 112. Strange with 96. And then three other Raiders before you got to... Mike Casivo on 74 and two belly flops for tries. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. but we're a, for a team that uh, has came in this season with no points of attack, they're starting to find a few. And yeah, I think Ethan Strange has really helped. Another one that Ethan Strange has given them a running half that is happy to go probing and look for some space out wide. And once it's they happy do... happy to take uh, a hit as well. Yeah. And mm. once they do, um, they've got pace to burn. Like... Well, they've got Savage, who helps, and he's lightning. Especially uh, over that first 20 minutes. And, I re- yeah. and I, we like Schiller. We've liked Schiller for a couple of years, and he hasn't really got going. Hasn't really been given a go. But yeah. um, he's quick, and he's big, and he's strong, and they can do worse and stick with him as well. Mm-hmm. Throw in Tomoko, who just throws blokes around for fun. Um, he is so good. One of the one of the scariest centres awesome. in the game, Tomoko, actually. Mm. Uh, what is he, Kiwi? Is he? I don't actually know. Is he, yeah, is he, you know, played for the Kiwis. In the Be- World Cup, I know. Fucking scored two or three tries against when they That's beat right. us in the final. That's right. He's yeah. a he's a monster. Um, yeah, did you just trending really nicely for a team we not given much hope to? Dominated Look. Parramatta for like the majority of this game. Yeah. Just fucking dominated, him, especially in the middle of the field. Yeah. Um, but for me, this was the bludger of the round. Mm? Yeah, I had such high hopes for yeah. it just being something wacky, and it wasn't. Yeah, it just it just didn't. Didn't make me want to continue watching after half time. That's yeah. why we all went home. So, Paris' defense was disgraceful was, for yeah. big parts of this game. The forwards just bumping blokes off, pushing them out of the way. <coughs> Tomoko came back and um, set up a try. There was one, <laughs> one tackle there. He pushed off two blokes, stepped back through the middle of the field, ran past three of them that stood there and watched him. Someone else tried to grab his jumper as he just ran straight past him. It was like it was just ridiculous some of the poor defence from yeah. Parramatta. Their first up contact is as bad as I've seen this year, especially in this game. But for the majority of this year, they don't lean in and put their shoulder in. They stand upright and they try to hug and hold and grab jerseys and you don't see them, you know, putting the blokes def- on their back. The no. defence was like watching my son play under nines. It's pretty close. <laughs> Tackled that way. What, um, is Barrett the defensive coach? Someone yes, else? I believe so. Yeah, right. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and another great kicking performance from Fogarty as well. Again, just kick these guys to death. Kick long. Uh, on the, the ball just seems to come down on the spot when, with his attacking kicks in and around the try line. Just consistently a threat with his, uh, when he's kicking. Uh, and he's going quite well now with his ball playing as well. He's starting to become a um, a definite. Th- well, they're one of their biggest ball playing threats. Mm. Uh, apart from Strange, who's helping him out as well on that left edge, 
And as you mentioned before, he's a real good running threat. He's got some nice passing to him. He's got a good little grubber, yep. acceleration, and doesn't mind taking a hit, which, yeah, digging into the line and providing balls for the guys on the outside. This was probably the most complete ball-playing performance I've seen out of the Raiders for a while, to be honest. Yeah, I like haven't seen it. Yeah. setting up tries for other players rather than just giving them a ball one-on-one -on -one and hoping yeah. that they, they do that themselves. Yeah, you know, he's been a bit integral to that, is Rappin. He's been a really good ball-playing mm -hmm. fullback. He's chiming in and he's, he's just opening up a bit extra space and happy to run in. And Smithy seems play to have helped a little bit too. Role a little yeah, bit. yeah, absolutely, like on that Gutho. sweep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Rappin is definitely... He's, he seems to have increased over the years. Yeah, yeah he like, agree, he's yeah. just... He's getting better and better. Yeah. But I think it's just opportunity. And, he, you know, I understand why lots of people don't like him, but you never doubt his effort. No, and definitely not. No, you put the 100% effort in. And um, look, I hope that this knee But, but given the opportunity to play bad. fullbacks, just, I think it's, he's bloomed. You know? he, no, no, he's I been reluctant to do it lately, but uh, well, last few years, but he's, he's been great. Yeah, no, I think I think the move to the fullback is a good idea for him, but I just hope this knee that we spoke about earlier... Mm. Well, maybe he's got ugly knees, but he is out <laughs> for next week. Yeah. But um, I hope it's not too bad for him because he's he's been he's been there for a long time and he's he's pretty yeah, much a good player. Smithies has helped a little bit in the middle of the field too. Um, not so much of drawing players and passing, but coming into the line and turning his back and taking you know taking yeah. two defenders with him and then and providing the ball yeah. back. To the to the halves, um, just gives them that little bit of space. And they didn't have Hoskins the here, but he's another one who's. All right. See, boys. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Shout out to Troy. Only to subscribe to Troy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, you throw Hoskins in, who's a, another high ball catching, grubber chasing back line rower, running back line rower. running back rower, mm -hmm. who's always going to make fifty tackles, who's also going to can get in and play ball if he needs to as well. Hallsbridge just coming back into yeah, this Horsbridge team as well. Yeah, only getting up and going. Mm -hmm. It's good signs if you're a Green fan. Absolutely. What what can we even say about... Um, and we, we, I quickly mentioned Savage, but you know what? He's had a good year. He's had a good year. Absolutely, he wasn't really yes. going. We thought yeah. he was a half on the outer. But it's hard. You can't coach pace. And, geez, he's quick. Yeah. Get him on the outside of the player with... Um, with a half a step head start, you're not stopping him. No. Um, and he's actually started providing some better lines as well rather than just holding an edge. He's um, cutting back in at the right time and he just seems to be reading the attack a little bit better and providing options back inside yeah. as well. So, uh, And do doesn't look as... F well, he's, he's bulked up. He doesn't yeah, look as frail as he did a couple of years yeah. ago. Look, is there anything even to talk about for Parra here? Well, no. If Dylan Brown wasn't on the field, they would have lost by 50. Yeah. <laughs> I think he saved three tries off his own bat, <laughs> running blokes down into corners and, and making tr try saving tackles. Like, Hopgood, great. Always good. Um, he's been fantastic for him since he's come there from Penrith. But there was really nobody else that I really wanted to mention in this game, <laughs> to no. be honest. That's Madison had a pretty decent game, but. Yeah. Well, we sort of made it a bit of a theme for the show, and we've already mentioned that. Paris surely got to be top bottom four mm. after this. Keep playing like this, yeah. Absolutely. But where do where do we put Canberra? Like, I think they're in about that six, seven, eight. Six, seven, eight. Yeah. Oh, I was thinking more like the eight, nine. Well, like yeah, the borderline sort of somewhere maybe there. there, maybe not. They're, they're fairly origin proof. They're do fairly, you say? Do yeah, you dare they, say yeah, gatekeepers for the eight. I guess yeah, yeah, well, I, say <laughs> they, well, I think they're better than that this year. I actually think they're better than I don't know who the gatekeepers are right now. Yeah, we'll say that. Fuck it. Yeah, the gatekeepers for the eight, but, <laughs> but they might. But I think they're actually in a better spot than they've been for a few years. But you definitely and, like and in those few years, they've always been there. So that's right. And then to say that they're pretty origin proof is pretty true as well. Like, mm. So yeah, yeah well, oh, there was a lot of unknowns realistically or, coming into this season. Um, Savage looked like he was a write off. Didn't want to be yeah. part. Of, like Ricky didn't want to be didn't part have of a the team. Back, didn't it's have been a fantastic. Eight. Fogarty's improved massively. Tomoko's improved again on what he was doing. Yeah. Um, Schiller's found a spot on the wing. Uh, their forwards have aimed up. Like They've been probably even better than what they were last year yeah. um, for parts of the game. You still haven't seen um, Tarpane and Papali really blow a game apart, but yeah. that could only be a week away. Yeah, well, you, know right. Right. you never know. They could, those, just, come those could just come and absolutely destroy it as well. well. Yeah. Maybe they could um, be the bottom half of the Levi's top Levi's been quite good at dummy half. I agree with that. Um, I agree with that. 
especially at attack, he's got his defensive issues. But um, they're yeah, a much more uh, consistent and reliable team than what they were last year. And we'd ri- I'd written them off before the start of the season, to be honest. I really thought their only point of attack was a Fogarty kick and a Tomoko um, yeah. one-on-one. And... You know, at times it is that way, but they're they're working together as a as a unit and they're going really well. I hate I hate to use this fucking wanky term, but you you blokes like Rapper and and Seb Chris, they're footballers. Like they can they can throw a long ball, they can pop an offload. They read they can, the play, they yeah, can beat they, a bloke one on one. They, they play their eyes up for you when they need they're to. They're experienced in it as well. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So and Ethan Strange come out of nowhere. Like, that was yeah. my biggest question mark for him is what, what other right. option are they going to yeah. have apart from a foggy kick to a corner? Yeah. And Ethan Strange's acceleration off the mark and the way he's, he's pulled he's pulled a couple of teams apart. Like, he's, what, five games in and he's probably two games where he's been close to the star of the match. So. Yeah. We, well, we've said that, you know, we've been a bit critical of those top teams, the Cow Queensland teams that have beaten no one. And just looking back now, in fairness, they beat they've beaten the Tigers, they've beaten uh, the Eels, who are, are gone. Is this Dolphins we're talking about? No, no, no this is Raiders. Oh, Raiders, yeah. And they beat the night. They tied up the Knights. Mm. So, like, it's not like they they don't have a, a big flag. A big no, no. But flag, if you but don't flag, turn you know. up, they're going to beat you. I agree with that. If yeah, you're yeah. not uh, close to eighty percent of your of your best, they're probably going to get you. Up, Which so. would almost make them gate te- gatekeepers, yeah, I guess. But so there you go. That's it. Uh, just on that, also the next month they've got Titans, Broncos, Sharks again, and Seagulls, Bulldogs. Is Fogarty now in a world of no super coach halfbacks worth considering at five thirty? I think he is. If you want to, if you're going to try and save some money in that position, yeah. But I think. Now it's um, you've you've got your options. It's it's Hughes, it's Johnson, Johnson, it's uh, Cleary or Hines. So I think they're the four, and you've got to pick two of those four and move on. All right, who are you picking for your three, two, one, so you can move on? Uh, Tomoko with three. I thought he was instrumental in the points that were scored. The way he was just throwing people around um, had plenty to do with the points that were scored. Strange with two points, and then I had either Schiller or Savage for the one. Should give it to Schiller. I think he's had a good couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, hard to argue. Fogarty, honorary mention, because he just kicks so well all the time. Yep, okay, cool. Let's go with that. And we've got to finish up traditional way we finish up the show, Brent. We've got to find a pot plan of the week. So who, which player did you see this weekend that who would have been outperformed had you just put a pot plan on the field and let them play for them. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it this way. Yeah. Oh, oh, my God. Have you got one, Barn? <laughs> That's how we do it. The, <laughs> they, you just, just line up, just even just the it, one big pot plan and just put him in that position. Dominic Young has to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it's sent off. <laughs> what a flop dropped, of a game. Dropped about three balls. I, <laughs> Mate, I, I don't think he made one good attempt in anything. It was that minus he did. 28, I'm pretty sure oh. it was in Supercoach land. At least 14, so. yeah. Oh, terrible <laughs> Supercoach. Yeah, what about I, I got 1,000 and I had Teddy and Walker who combined for eight and I had mm. Fainu who got 14. So. If all three yeah, stay on, I dare say I have a good week. I had anyway. like four blokes that got 20 and yeah. got near 1,100. But, yeah. yeah, no, Dominic Young did absolutely nothing positive for the Roosters in this game. I know Brian Kelly, seven missed tackles, one ineffective tackle, and uh, still didn't watch Zach Lay, but just uh, waved to him as he walked past for the first try. That I just thought, but let's just, in fairness, go the outside backs of the Titans. They're all as bad as each other. I don't think it's fair to isolate one of them. <laughs> have you got one in mind? Well, it can be the bunker if that's where no, you really no, want. Well, it's definitely the bunker, and I can definitely agree with uh, Dominic Young. Mm. But I'm just going to go Parramatta. Yeah, that's fair too. A whole Absolutely bunch of pop plans. I, whole, I understand that. The whole <laughs> bunch of pop plans. Yeah. That was a dead set bludger. Slap. On their side. I'm going to mention this word one more time, Latrell. Uh, I thought we were. Oh, okay. No, no, no you did say to the end. He needs a good slap. He, he needs a good slap. I mean, slap. I, like, isn't his cousin or uncle Anthony Mundine? Some, no, they have some relation. Or yeah. don't, don't uh, they have sure. A, don't, I'm sure they've got a relation. Sure. Anyway, maybe they both need to be slapped together. But yeah, you, you, you can't. With that? You can we with? slap their heads together? Like you can't possibly. elbow people in the throat. No, no you can't come out doing that. I have an issue with that. Anyway, have you got one, Brent? Or is he sticking with that, Latrell? 
you got to slap. Uh, Latrell, yeah, Latrell, okay. oh, nah, there. Yep, Latrell needs to slap. Mate, that elbow, that elbow. As I said, I didn't see the game, but I've seen that much coverage afterwards. That elbow, mate, slap him. Yeah. Fucking slap him. <laughs> Barney. Yeah. All right, move on. The drill. <laughs> All right, finish on a. We always finish on a good note. Is someone you want to salute this weekend? Ooh. I'll go first. I'll, I'll give it. Got to give it DC. Three hundred tenth game for the club and pulled Penrith apart. I think is it worthy of a salute from me. Uh, Barn. Yeah, I left that one for you because <laughs> I was pretty sure was that go. was where yeah, you were okay. going. Um, I had two. I couldn't really split chance. I thought his return was mm. fantastic. Two hundred sixty something running meters. Uh, seven tackle busts, I think it was. Two line break assists. He was in everything that the Warriors did. And um, you got to give Matty Burton a rap for yeah, what yeah. he did. Okay. The hat trick tries. I think he had two try assists as well and was the only reason that those, that those guys scored. Or well, him and Kickout were the only two reasons they scored 30 points in that first half. It did us for us. I Well, no, I'm going to agree with the Matty Burton hat trick, all that. Yeah. Um, I'll agree with you on the DCE, 310 games. But... At the same time, I'm also going to throw one out to Dylan Edwards. As yeah, we said fair, early, earlier, 300 odd metres up against 80 metres with Latrell Light. Yeah. Yeah. Mate, that's like it's consistent, but he deserves it every week. If he's going to put in the put in the work, he deserves it. Uh, and yeah, well, the other one I had up my sleeve was Wade Egan, who I thought was fantastic. Yeah. So, um, enjoyable weekend. Crazy ass weekend. There's more rugby league cast to come. I'm going to preview all of that very soon. Subscribe to us if you haven't already. Leave us some feedback below if you're watching on YouTube and uh, Spotify. Find us on Facebook and Threads and Instagram. Uh, get in touch with us anywhere through there. Thank you, Brent, for no joining worries. us. Thanks for having me. I don't feel too bad about Barney's cold shot. He just had to deal with me for five years, so now he knows. <laughs> oh, that's just right. To I, pull I was, on through and say it was, it was really good because I was going off on a tangent and trying to get the wheels back on the fucking up, wagon. He, he's, mate. he's used to it. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> if you're here in the early days, don't get worry. the wagon the back sun, on the road. The sun would be coming <laughs> up. From yeah, over yeah, exactly. Days, mate. <laughs> We're dragging on you, mate. Yeah. Anyway, thank you all. We'll we previewing now. Surprise! Surprise!